Hi everyone. I am happy to announce that after numerous requests for us to do an episode on the great Martin Margiela, we have enough pieces to pretty much do this episode justice. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with Margiela, he is um, a rebel with a cause and he is much revered in the fashion industry and with the public as well. He started his career in 1988 with his partner Jenny Marins and his first collection was I believe spring summer of 89 and he took the world by storm because he was determined to not do things in the traditional way. Fashion World has its set rules and you know how you do fashion shows and uh, the way you make things. M Margiela uh, is a very was a very c cerebral designer. He's still alive. I'm speaking about him in past tense because over 10 years ago he retired from the company and the company goes on currently being led by John Galliano. So I was lucky enough to be in Paris last summer when there was not one but two major retrospectives on Margiela's work. One was Margiela the Her Hermes years and the other was uh, his 20 year uh, career. And really awe-inspiring to see how diverse his uh, eye is and how he was able to actually create similar designs from his uh, eponymous collection that would work within the luxury market. I mean that's pretty pretty remarkable and beautiful beautiful things. I will say that even after uh, it's over 10 years since his departure he remains to have a, a tremendous impact on the fashion world and uh, he was so devoted to protecting his identity and his privacy that he's still referred to as the invisible man. Um, Many of his innovations, once considered radical, are, um, have been really accepted as normal. And he was one of the first designers to upcycle pieces. Uh, his artisanal collections took vintage or used items and redefined them in a way that was magical. In any case, I want to say that a lot of people think that Martin Margiela was part of the Antwerp Six. He was not. He was in uh, the university at the same time uh, of the Antwerp Six, but he was a year ahead of the group. When I refer to Mr. Margiela's influence on the fashion world, his impact goes as far back as 1997 when Marc Jacobs was um, reviewed by Susie Menkes. I actually have the quote that is from Women's Wear Daily where he said, quote, I've never denied how influenced I am by Margiela or Ray Kawakubo. These are people that inspire my work. I don't hide that. Everyone is influenced by Comme de Garçon and by Martin Margiela. Anybody who's aware of what life is in a contemporary world is influenced by those designers. Pow! <laughs> I mean, that's a really powerful statement. Anyway, enough about words. Let's look at the beautiful pieces of clothing. We have um, a couple of pieces that were actually in the museum exhibitions, not actually in, but that were exhibited. Uh, this is a piece that is really interesting. He did these replica pieces in the spring summer of 1995 and the label actually says reproduction of a series of old garments jacket of a custom-made suit Belgium 1940s parentheses original disproportions have been respected so um, yeah this is actually and it's in beautiful condition. Um, and then we're going to move on to the next one, which is uh, actually the spring-summer of 1996. It's a trump loy duster, and uh, he used trump loy a lot, uh, sequined, fake sequined, uh, evening dresses, and uh, this one looks like it has um, a back belt with buttons, and it's this wonderful uh, rayon, weighted rayon crepe. 
And um, this we weren't able to actually find, but it is one of the few pieces that I have that actually has the numbered labels. He introduced these labels in 1997, and each label number signifies um, accessories, um, his artisanal collection, perfume, women's clothing. And so this one is number one. Uh, you can see the proportions on this um, are extremely exaggerated. This would have to be for someone who's probably eight or nine feet tall. The other thing about this that I love is that when you touch it, it feels like a nice quality leather, but it is in fact fake. And uh, for those vegans that are looking for a good alternative to a sexy, tight-fitting leather pant, this is it. This jacket and pants is uh, it's a beautiful, lightweight, very faint uh, woven stripe pant that is completely deconstructed. And I, I actually haven't seen this on, but I'm looking forward to seeing it. One leg is quote unquote normal, and the other leg is exaggerated and um, unfinished. Uh, this came from the collection of Spring Summer 2006. And uh, if you look on the Vogue runway, it's looks two and four. You can see how this, um, the waist is extended. And the jacket is also deconstructed. One side is finished and the other side isn't with the raw edge. So this one has very visibly the blank white label. Um, these two are from the same collection. They're actually jacket linings, but included are elements of an actual tailored jacket. The only thing is that the pockets have extended into the lapel. And um, it's a wonderful silhouette and just a, a fabulous play on what's traditional. And of course, on the mannequin, we have the extremely well-known semi-couture bodice. It's trompe l'oeil once again. This one is a reissue. He did the original one in 1997. This was done in 1999 when he brought back a few things that were like major hits. Um, I love this one because it has the shoulder pads as well. This wonderful piece is uh, from his Spring Summer 2000 collection and it was a collection where the, the show actually focused on overblown proportions. Uh, 150, 175, I think, and 200 percent. And this one has a label of, oh my goodness, zero. I forgot I have an artisanal piece in my collection. So there you go. Um, the traditional slip dress is not so traditional, and i uh, um, pretty happy I have this. Becoming a world-class, beloved designer doesn't happen overnight. Um, Margiela graduated from the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Antwerp in 1980. And after he graduated, he worked at several places, but most notably, he worked with um, Gautier uh, from 1984 to 1987, I believe. Um, I'm sure that his time with Gautier really impacted his decision to not be in the limelight because uh, I, that gave him uh, insight into what life would be like once he launched his own career. You know, it's pretty remarkable to think that he shunned um, having press come by beforehand to see his things. He absolutely positively did non-traditional fashion shows. He did them in abandoned metros. He did them in areas that were low income and allowed the children of the neighborhood to participate. He had such um, an, a heart and a mind and uh, creativity that 
truly, I don't think any designer will ever be able to match. So with vintage clothing and the evolution of the market, we have things that are affected by uh, popularity, by trends, but I will tell you that the market for Margiela pieces is outrageous. Recently there was an auction in Paris where I believe one of his uh, former models uh, put many of her pieces up for auction and he had a piece that was made out of a high density plastic bag, a shopping bag, and that hammered with commission close to $15,000. So a lot of these pieces really command extremely high prices and uh, there is a great market for it. There, there are websites like Byronesque, for example, that are always looking for um, m very desirable Margiela pieces. Uh, first dibs also as well. So if you're lucky enough to score any of his pieces at reasonable prices, you've done well. Uh, there are a lot of notable collections. Among them, uh, tube socks that were utilized to create garments, um, wig, a wig jacket, um, disco ball pants and vest. Um, I mean, you think about taking familiar objects and somehow coming up with this idea of broken dishes, bro broken porcelain, uh, gumball machine rings into a very sexy halter top. Uh, the more you look into the creations that he's made and his uh, sublime way of looking at things, the more you fall in love with him as a designer. Uh, among many of Mr. Margiela's admirers, uh, the curator of the Galliera exhibition last year in Paris, Alexandre Samson, um, was asked, do you, why do you think he's had such a lasting influence? And his reply was, because he's free. And you look at his body of work, hit the choices that he's made, um, he remains a creator without a face and he is uh, the person that deconstructed the rules of fashion uh, on multiple levels. And you look at choices that he's made with the anonymity of his brand, with the label basically saying nothing, uh, but having the four stitches that clearly indicates that they're his pieces. You look at the way he wants you to look at the clothing and not the models, and so masking the models either with um, tape, sunglasses, paint. He wants you to not look at him as a personality, which can be distracting. He wants you to look at his clothing, and he is another person that has totally withstood the test of time, even after his departure. So I'm going to say in closing, uh, I'm going to actually use a quote that Azadine Elias said, we appropriate, we do some vintage, the fashion demigod Azadine Elias once said, quote, individual vision no longer exists. Margiela is the last one. So are you ready for this week's show off? We actually have two pieces this week. So this uh, piece that was designed for H&M is a replica of spring-summer 1996, where Margiela did a lot of trompe l'oeil, like the duster that we showed earlier. And uh, it, it's great, because it really looks like you've got this super slender figure wearing a um, 1930s sequin silhouette, or disco era, depending. But the main show-off this week looks like a plain blue jacket, but do the big reveal. It is a haute couture L'Envin jacket. Um, I don't know the year because this label doesn't say the year, but the best part besides the Lesage embroidery, which is so beautiful, and the contrast of the royal blue with the black beads, 
is inside this jacket, besides the couture label and the number, which hopefully I will have the time to contact Lanvin and find out the provenance, um, is there is a tape on the right side and it's very fitted on this mannequin. It's tight. And the tape says Wallace. Gee, hmm, I wonder, is that the name of the model? Or did it belong to a very famous woman named Wallace? To be continued. So that's it for this week. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I want to remind those of you that are new to watching this channel that you can actually subscribe to our YouTube channel. And by doing so, you'll be notified every time we upload a new episode. So thanks so much for watching. Bye.